Hi, I'm Pat Keen. I'm here with my brother Mark Keen, and we're uh, back out here testing once again. Uh, you've been watching us on some of our previous uh, YouTube channel videos, and we're trying out a lot of these different screens. These are kind of some of the different screens that have worked the best for us. Uh, we're trying different variations, as we've been showing you before in our previous videos. Uh, this is one of the ones that works the best. And also this one here that we're also going to try it with the short screen. You know, we've been doing a lot of testing and uh, last time we kind of felt a little bit we were going backwards trying to uh, over engineer it. But you know, sometimes you have to go back to uh, some of the initial changes you made. That's all part of test drag. We'll still carry all the rocks off. Yeah, but I, I still think the woven mesh is going to do the best job, even the longer section, only because we had such good luck in our main sluices, like the slow flow system. Yeah. It's kind of based on the same theory. The woven wire creates a lot of drag on the water, slows everything down, drops the heavies through, and it really drops the water speed underneath it. So, yeah, but but we'll I see. also tend to think that as the water travels underneath. And if you leave too much of an area open here with the woven mesh, that it might create too much divergence of the water flow and a lot of the, not so much the material, but it might take away from some of this or it might create a back pressure. We don't know. Yep. And that's why we're testing it. And that's why we're salting it with gold to see where the gold right. actually ends up the sluice. All right, let's now, you, now, now you notice we've been doing this very methodically. We've been actually cleaning up the sluice in four different parts because we want to see where the gold's going to end up. So at least you guys uh, are with us and you're going to see what's going on and you can come to your own conclusions a bit. But I think pretty soon, within the next week or so, we're going to go into production. But it doesn't mean that we're going to stop making changes. As we go along and as we learn, I think we're going to be making different screens for different types of uh, flows and for different types of conditions. I think that's part of all building a better mousetrap. Yeah. But the whole idea and the concept is that we don't have to sit there and classify all the material, shake it down bucket by bucket through a classifier to get half inch or minus what you normally run in the sluice. With this, we might be able to just leave the uh, classifiers behind. We need to try the screen that has a larger opening in it. Yeah, probably so. But I think it's working pretty good overall, though. I actually like it, the shorter screen in there, because we I think we have more water pressure to push everything up the ramp. But we'll have to try it. We're going to have to try it. Do you want to go ahead and switch it soon, or do you want? what do you want to do? Uh, I'm going to run probably a couple more buckets worth. All right. And, and then we'll just pull it up a little bit and see what the ripples look like. A lot of black sand here. Look at this. Loaded, Pat. More black sand. I think I've seen it in a lot of areas. Yep. Well, that's a good test. Adverse conditions. All right. You probably slammed a couple five-gallon buckets through there, Pat. Let's go ahead and... Uh, not really. Hold on, hold on. Let me get out of the flow. All right, so Pat's just going to lift the sluice up. We're going to see what it looks like underneath. you got to admit, those new legs are so handy. Oh, yeah. We need to come up with a, a little more clever idea than yeah, this Yeah, it was just a... Quick and dirty, but we'll we'll get it worked out. At least we don't have that piece lifting on the like we did the last test. Every time we lift the screen up last time, rocks would might would lift that front lip and rocks would get underneath it. It's not gonna happen this time. It's part of testing, you live and learn.
what I noticed here is that this is so low, I don't think we're getting a good enough action here. And we I might not. Well, you know, the load is right. You got your heaviest of the uh, heaviest. But if you're looking at this, you know what? Either we need to tweak the screen or it needs a little bit more of a bend. Perhaps. We need more area and a little more depth underneath that. Yeah, but Pat, that does not look that bad. That looks uh, pretty I, damn good. I didn't like how the material was building up here. Yeah, but it's really not building up. I don't see that. Well, look, I did. The, the uh, load of the black sand there is about perfect. The miracle mats weren't doing what it's supposed to do. The back rubles are looking pretty good. I mean, overall. Yeah, but I'm talking about here. That little that this was here? loading up oh. because this is too close to the bottom, okay. and I don't think we're getting enough low. Well, let's, let's try the other screen. Okay. All right, so we just switched over to a little bit larger front screen and a little and short the shorter uh, and woven the shorter wire. Uh, woven mesh right here. Yeah, Make sure that's all in there properly. Okay, I'm gonna. Drop it back down. You now. put the wing. Oh, we didn't have a wing bolt on there. It'll be okay. Oh. Okay, we just changed it out to the half piece of the woven mesh and the little longer uh, grizzly bars in front, which is going to increase the uh, pressure in the very front and not allow some material to dive but we got to see how it's going to react with the material. So let's try that out and see how it works. I think we need more water, Pat. The, see, the back of the box is out quite a bit. You see the difference? Yeah. I kind of like the, the straighter. I think, I, I think that right there is kind of the, the difference that it's going to be, that's going to make. Yeah, but I kind of like the gentle ramp at the same time, too. I wonder if there's any easier way to actually fabricate this. It's just so hard to compete with grizzly bars. You can't water jet it. So far, it's... We might come up with something. This one here has a little different profile. The screen is tilted up a little bit, which I like. That's why this one worked so good the last well, time. Well, you know what, Pat? It's going to force more material through it. Yeah. But it's a little and, more... And also increase the uh, flow and velocity underneath this Yeah, you, you, you're probably right. But I, I like the flatness, though. It's, it gives it less energy to carry it up the hill. But we'll have to try it and see what happens. Yep. Okay. All right. <clears throat> you know, what's interesting about what Pat just said is that you have to do slow moves on a sluice box if you want to maintain the good recovery. If you had like nothing but, let's say, miner's maw, I mean, if you had nothing like the Miracle mat or some other kind of all rubber mat, that would actually create real havoc in the sluice. You'd actually lose gold. That's why Pat and I both agree we like to have a mixture of riffle designs. A little Miracle mat, some expanded metal, some Hungarian riffles, some carpet. Really the combination of different carpets, mats, etc., really does make a, really does provide us our optimum fine gold recovery. Okay, here's the side profile of our other one. Yeah, a little flatter in the front, isn't it? <clears throat> yeah. We need that little kick up. You know what? It's pretty funny how each different way we change it, we've been kind of changing it up. Now look at this one here. Look at the difference between the two. Also, I noticed right here, we're really closing it off a lot by having this plate directly where it is. But we still, we're getting about a good half inch channel underneath, or a little bit more. Uh, but I think this is gonna be the one. Yeah, let's get the wing up back in there and push it down. Uh, 
All right, so we've already ran a couple buckets of material through the sluice box, and I think we're kind of settling down on, on a single design. So I'm real happy about that. Okay, I'm just going to process a little bit more material, then we're going to salt it to see how where the gold gets carried in the sluice box. We're going to salt it and then run the more material. At least three, four more buckets. I want to see if gold's going to migrate also. But honestly, I think we're really close, Pat. The longer classifier for you, I got the low water speed underneath. I've got uh, that front grizzly with that slight ramp. Seems to process the material a little more efficiently, so I definitely think we're on the right track, or we're not there already. Rod's cleaning out pretty good too. A lot of good rocks in here. Come on. Feed me. Feed me. Big flat rock. You know, Pat, that front is working excellent. Okay, quickly, shovel feed. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, Pat, I'm not a good shoveler. I don't rotate. As they say, you better get on or get out. Beautiful. I really like the idea of the longer screen now that I'm seeing it work because I'm seeing everything dive yep. instead of skip. Man, it's got a lot of black sand. It's just black in the back of that box. That's a trip. No, that's how you test it. I think we're ready to do our salt test. Right? Yeah, I'd say there's a lot of black sand in there. A lot more black sand than I'm used to. Yep. The box is counting pretty good, though. Well, I see the grizzly bars on the front are working flawless now. Yeah, that was it. That's our compromise. And we had a little bit more angle to it. So we had a little larger size opening aperture. You know what's cool? We could probably... We could have a chain gang of people if we wanted to. We could probably slam a five-gallon bucket this thing probably every 45 seconds. Really handling it nice and fast. Well, you know, then you got the problem with black sands. Oh, yeah, but this is not your typical condition. We're not going to find this part of the condition. But again, that's what's great about testing it here. If we have such a uh, harsh, uh, heavy black sand concentrate that just blows up the ripples. And that's the cool thing about the Hungarian style ripples and all the ripples that we use, they have a high exchange rate. They have that regenerative. Ripple. Yeah, it's not just a trap that's yeah. going to get buried and then have the gold skip over. See the, the, the trap, I know we discussed this before, but a gold trap works really good for a short period of time. Once it's loaded up with black sand, then I've seen it, them actually lose as much gold as they can. That, that's a big deal, and we've proven time and time again with the Miracle Mat and the more conventional systems, they're forgiving, they, they just do an outrageous, an outrageous job in all conditions. And let's face it, you're never in the same condition point. Faster water, slower water, uh, flatter box, steeper box, uh, steeper box, they always change. <laughs> Alright, let's get some more material ready. Man, that's just working so good now. I love it. It sure is nice, but it takes straight bank material and run it right into your sluice box. 
and I'm what? probably blocking some of the flow a bit. Yeah, what what a time save. Yeah, I cleaned it, it cleared it all out without touching it, Mark. Yeah, what a time save for this be for everybody. All and right. I'm down in a solid black sand layer. I've never I seen so much black I haven't sand. Either. Look, it's still traveling over the black end. Yeah, but the good thing is, like the back end. is these, uh, you know, traditional Hungarian ripples are regenerative. They're just constantly churning, and you'll get, you'll have your gold get sucked in, your black sand get sucked out. That's the amazing thing about these this type of ripple system. It's always self-cleaning. It's not a gold trap. It's regenerative. It's always rejuvenating itself. It has a constant exchange. That's the one good thing about a Hungarian ripple design. Yep. I gotta be careful not to fall into the abyss. <laughs> it's not that big. <laughs> the abyss. So is this the same test we've been running? Ten pieces, ten big flakes, and a bunch of fines? Actually not. But what I want to see is I want to see what percentage of the gold uh, works into each section. Okay. Um, I think there might be uh, 14 or 15 little pieces, but there's a, there's a lot of fine gold in here. Okay, that'll be interesting. Now you remember when our, our last test we did, we put it in the shelf and all that dry gold floated. That was a trip. I know. I couldn't believe That's it. That's the amazing think. thing about uh, surface tension. Yep. And just a little bit of oil, and it could be oil from your uh, hand. It could be oil coming off your skin that can create the flotation of the gold. You know, I just thought about that. You know, that's why we put rubber flaps on jet flares and rubber flaps on header boxes to break that surface tension. What if we could put a rubber flap on this thing? Probably more trouble than sports, but it'd be fun to try it. It's funny, it almost looks like a piece of gold. Burying that gold deep. We had the bucket half full of dirt, and now it's uh, a couple shovel loads on top. We're really trying to do some fair testing here. You got a lot of black sand, too. That those ripples, if you look close, those are just loaded with black sand. So Zoom in uh, uh, just a little bit so okay. others can see. I mean... That is just super heavy cons in there. So this will be interesting, but you can see the Miracle Match doing its job. All right. That big flat disc. Oh, yeah. there it goes. You're always going to have a scraggler. Pat, dump it in there. Show me you have a pair. <laughs> it's your gold. <laughs> oh, such a mean brother. You know, I can really tell that uh, Wolven Wire is doing his trick, Pat. You can just see it working. Yeah, and another thing, I'm kind of in an extreme flow here. So when you're dumping it in, the energy is trying to push all that material pretty fast, and if it doesn't make it up that first little tiny ramp, that means I better find it all right in that middle piece. Yep, exactly. Well, we'll when we tear it apart, we'll do a diagnostic when we, when we disassemble it. Uh, maybe I should cap it and shovel a little bit more gravel or Let's run another Get, get a couple bucket. more buckets full. It's the only fair test we can do. You gotta have some material in there already. God, look at those rocks come down at. It's so cool.
right, so Patrick went ahead and he just dumped, uh, basically cleaned out the rear carpet. He's dumping it in this pan. He's just gonna check it out, see if we got any color in there. A lot of black sand. Yeah. This is the very last section of the sluice where the, where the bigger ripples were. I'm actually going through it pretty quick. Yeah, you're moving pretty good. For that heavy black sands, you can't really rush it too much. You see anything? Hopefully just a couple few small specks if we did our job right. Five little fly specks. Okay, that's not bad. That's kind of what we had last time. I had about half a dozen little pe little pinheads in there. Hey, look, you can see them right here. Let me see if I can get, get a little, little closer. closer and zoom in. Yeah, I can do that. Right up the top there? Yep. Yeah, I can't see them. Maybe can on the One, camera. two, three. Man, you got better eyes than I do. Oh, yep, there you go. Okay, I saw it there. All right, cool. Let's let's uh, do the middle section. This stuff cle cleans up real nice. And you know what's nice about the miracle mat? It, it's so soft and spongy that when the gold comes in contact with it, it actually sticks to it. But you know, you, you, we have to make sure that we get all the way back into this little tiny apex back in here where that eddy current has a tendency to kick the gold back. And look at that, I see a piece of speck of gold caught right there. Let's see if I can see that. And it's wow. just stuck there. That's cool. Now you know it's doing its job. Well, if we did our job right, Pat, you should find nothing but fine flower gold in there. That's really where the miracle mat excels. Man, we got a really heavy load of black sand on that uh, carpet path. So far, I think I like the carpet better than miner's moss in the front, don't you? Yeah, I do. I find it to be easier to clean and also it doesn't pucker up in between the expanded metal and you don't lose uh, lose ripple action that exactly. is great. Okay, let's see what's in this one. A lot, of, a lot faster than the pan, isn't it? Yeah, because there's nothing in there. Now the cool thing about the Miracle Mat is it is very self-cleaning. It's an extremely I think we lost ripple. our sun, sun light I like can see it, okay. Yep, seen it all over. Look. On a flower? A lot of the super fine stuff. Let me come closer in here. Whoa. Okay. Oh, I can see it now. Some real fine stuff in there, too, I can see. Look at that. Teddy wants to be part of it, Pat. Wow, look at that. Teddy, knock it off. That's a lot of flower, Pat. You know what's interesting? That you don't see a lot of large black sand chunks. It's all that fine stuff. Compared to what we found in the last section uh, of the uh, sluice, there's probably 10 times the amount that yeah. we got from the indicator mat. What I that too. means that a lot of the gold isn't really even making it down. Let's That's go good. to the next section. Cool. Okay. So we found probably less than 1% of the gold in the very rear riffle section. We found a, a good section of gold, a, about 10 times the amount in the miracle mat. 
Now, if it serves right and the sluice box is working good, that means we'll find a lot more in, in the little carpet section here that had the expanded metal wire over it. And like me and Mark were having a discussion with the miner's moss, I actually like the way the carpet worked better. In low flow velocity, the miner's moss has a tendency to fill up with sand. So uh, we're gonna take this section out. When you picked it up, let me get a shot of that. Cause that's, it's really interesting. Look how it's, uh, you can tell all your larger magnetite, hematite, garnet sands are building up on it. And this, you know what? Way different from hey, the miracle mat. The weight of this, just in this little piece of carpet, probably weighs uh, probably weighs a couple of pounds, which is amazing. Really? Let me see it. I won't drop. Oh, you're, that is a trip. Yeah, that is it's real heavy. heavy. That's real heavy. It's wild. Too bad it's not all gold. Maybe even heavier. I'm gonna stick that in here. Okay. I want to get that dirt that was along the side there. It's kind of winding down there. We're coming to an end, aren't we? Yeah, you know what? We sacrificed a lot of time and a lot of energy to do all these different tests. But really, that's what it takes. If you're going to, as they say, if you're going to go, go big. Yeah. But it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, I've we've had a it. great time. And right. you know what? I'll actually miss coming out here on the weekend. The Let's questions that we got on uh, Facebook about all of this, I can tell that a lot of people that have been watching our videos have also learned a lot. Yep. And it's kind of great to have those people kind of, in a sense, kind of follow along with us and see what we're doing and see what it's all about. We have a lot of fun doing this. It's not always about the gold. It's about the adventure and the good times and the camaraderie of uh, being out with your friends. I get to spend time with my brother <laughs> while we're having a good time. that I didn't find any of the larger gold in the last two sections I panned. I should probably see a good amount of it in this. Yeah, but I think you know, I would have never figured the expanded metal on the carpet would work as well as it did. It did work good though. Yeah. You know, we tried the larger expanded metal and the medium expanded metal. I don't even know which one I like better. What do you like so far? They both seem to do about the same job. I would job. say the uh, medium to large. Yeah, which one do you like better? Because I'm not sure. I think the uh, large one. I got the small one. <laughs> <laughs> I think it doesn't make a whole lot of difference. They're both doing their job. You know, sometimes when you're going through large particles of black sand, you want to be careful. Sometimes you find uh, meteorites. Ah, the sun finally. Ah, there you go. Feels good too. Well, you know, Pat, our next video we're gonna have to come out, we're gonna have to set up a high banker and turn this thing into a mini max to show people some of the versatility of it. I'm really anxious to try it with an actual dredge system on it. I'm real curious to know how that new front screen is gonna work. Oh yeah. What do you see? Well, I'm not down to the bottom, but I'm seeing a lot of the little pieces come out already. Oh, that's a good indicator. Step it up. This is 
right next to the indicator mat. You know, I can see it from here. I'm going to get closer. Yeah, look at that. It's actually a real good amount of gold. Ah, sorry. And look at all that fine stuff. Oh, I mean, yeah. compared to that, what we were finding before in the lower section. Yep. Yeah, it's just loaded with flour in there too, Pat. So that tells us we're doing our job. We caught, how much would you say is in there compared to, to the Miracle Mat? I would say probably 75% of it is just in this pan alone. Okay. And I would say not even 1% in the last, and I'd say probably Two or two to five percent in the other one. Okay. I think between this and the miracle mat, I mean the uh, front indicator mat, I think we got all of our gold there. Yeah, I'm sure we did. So let's wash off the rest of the sluice and let's see what was in the the indicator mat. Sounds good. Okay. We cleaned up the last section. Just a couple of specks. We cleaned out the miracle mat found a lot of finds but nothing big we cleaned out this section we had quite a bit of gold and the indicator mat that was also underneath the screen almost the whole amount i think is going to hold all of our real big stuff i didn't find a lot of big stuff in the uh in the other sections except for the carpet piece i thought we found a couple of pieces but my bet is most of it's in the indicator mat. Well, all, and if it's the, in the, the first pieces. section of the sluice, that means that that combination is working well, but it's doing its purpose. It's actually holding, I'd say the, the box is holding anywhere from 95 to 98% of the gold. I really even hate to use a percentage because it's not really a true judge of things. A lot of it has to do with the experience of someone actually setting up the box right, getting the right speed, the right velocity, the right depth, the right conditions, the right classifications, uh, your, your, your different um, percentages of different size material. Everything has a play in it. But the Here's, good thing is, is we're finding all of our gold in the very front of our box. Let's do this. Let's do it. That's funny. Hey, but better you have that bucket on the front this time or in the back. Oh yeah. Last time we washed a little bit over the edge of the pan. Got some on this uh, inside of the frame near you. Get your wall on your side. There's some black sand oh. hanging on the edge. Okay. Very cool. we don't have our snappy grips on there it makes it easier yeah looks like a piece of aluminum shaving look how much gold was in that front mat they come up close and i can't see it considering we only found four little specks in that last section of the sluice that gives me a good indication that we're catching it all look at that that's awesome See, normally the it, go, ahead. go ahead. Normally the indicator mat doesn't hold the gold, but when you drop the velocities as slow as we are underneath it, it does a pretty damn good job. Look how much fine gold was in there. Wow. And that was underneath that first little screen. I think, uh, Mark, I think we got a winner. I think we got a pat. This is awesome. I'm excited. This is what we wanted. This is what we wanted to see.
I hope you guys from actually watching all of this uh, kind of concur with what we're talking about. I think we're about ready to go into production on one of the first ones, but we're never going to be stuck to one design. Nope. We're, we're going to be constantly pushing the limits and uh, building a better mousetrap for you guys out there. And I hope everybody learned as much as we did. We learned a ton of stuff in, over the last eight weeks. Absolutely. It's been a lot of fun, though. Well, we'll be out again soon. we got to do some more testing on some of the upgrades for this box, such as... And some and, of our new products that we're working on yeah. that we don't want to show anyone yet. Yeah. Because they'll copy them. You know, part of being a prospector is also being good stewards of the land. You know, every time that we've came out here, we seem to be picking up a lot of these day users' uh, trash. It's kind of a shame that people don't kind of pick up after themselves. Out in the forest, out in these areas, you should definitely uh, pack out what you pack in. So, you, you know... know it, only takes, it only takes five minutes to make the place cleaner than when you left it. I know, it's kind of disgusting, isn't it? I mean, it's so easy to pick up your own trash. I don't get it. But anyways, you know, as a gold miner, I feel like everybody holds us to a higher standard, so... Let's be that higher standard. And a responsibility to keep our public lands clean.